Hi, my name is Michiel Frankfurt and today I'll be showcasing SSGI. We will be doing a setup where a baked GI is completely turned off and we're going to check what the uh, capabilities are of screen space global illumination. So let's head over to the package and start importing it. So now that the import is done, we need to select a renderer, the renderer that's currently active. In my case, that's the high fidelity renderer. Let's add the SSGI feature to it. Already you can tell that the scene view has changed. The game view hasn't changed, I'll get to that later. First, we need to set up some basic settings. So first of all, this uh, the current setup that I have is set to deferred rendering. However, the feature that we just added, uh, we also need to enable deferred rendering. And as you can tell by toggling this on and off, it's, it's way more natural lighting. So let's go to the game view. As you can tell, nothing changed there. That's because the camera is to be flagged as a SSGI camera. We can do this by just simply adding a component called the SSGI camera. Once you've done that, you can tell that the, uh, the game camera also receives GI. If you want to say uh, see the difference between SSGI turned on and off, you could just use this toggle here on the bottom right. So this is just the default settings. And, um, yeah, we need to go over these settings to check if the those are correct for this particular scene. But before that, we do that, let's take a look at some other core settings that we need to adjust first. Starting with the ability to uh, make this feature work in an actual build. So let's head over to Edits, Project Settings. And here we see the list of always included shaders. As you can tell, this is both effects and the shaders that we use to render SSGI needs to be included here too. We automated this, so if we go to Tools, SSGI, you can press this button, add SSGI to always include the shaders. Take a second, and here we are. Now you are ready to go, and you can start making builds. So let's head over to Tools, SSGI, Debug Window. Right here. And here I can select a camera. In this case, I'm going to select the scene camera. And you can tell this is the actual GI pass that's being rendered. First, we need to ask ourselves, do we need to render the entire scene? Is this what we want? Do we want those buildings in the background to be lit as well? Or do we just want to focus on objects nearby? By reducing the distance, we also save a little bit of performance. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have the SSGI, the minimum range and the maximum range. The maximum range is the actual range of you know, the entire uh, SSGI calculations. So let me just increase that to somewhere that I think like, okay, this could work. So maybe we don't want to include those buildings in the background. We just set it to uh, it's nicely 25. The minimum range is the range from which it starts fading out. So in this case, I'll just set it to 15. And now the SSGI will fade out between 15 and 25 units. So it has 10 units of fade out distance, basically. There's one more thing that we need to tweak, and that's this slider. It's the scan depth to the range text falls off a little bit. But basically think of this uh, feature, the entire SSGI is rendered as a, a blob of pixels, right? So for each individual pixel on the screen, a blob of pixels is being sampled around it and light information is being gathered. So you, you can ask yourself, do we need to sample the entire screen or just a sub portion of it? By increasing and decreasing this value, you can tell that the uh, the spread of the, the sampled pixels is increased or decreased. Um, now this is this has nothing to do with the actual light fall off. This is just how many pixels of the screen do we sample. And if you move away, um, you can tell that's it's actually fixed to the uh, to the object itself. It decreases over distance as well, which means that objects far away will have a more narrow spread of uh, sampled pixels, which increases image stability and sharpness. It really depends on how natural you want to make it look. So in this case, I'll just set it a bit higher because I think we need a bit more spread to, uh, to make the, uh, the wall look nice. Right, let's set up the shadows. First, let's focus on this fence object over here. And as you can tell, it doesn't really look that good. Um, it's casting shadows on objects behind it where it really shouldn't. It's a thin object light should be able to pass behind this fence object here. However, if we look at the depth information that we have, you can tell 
yeah, for the shader, it's it's very difficult to tell. Like, is this a wall or is this just a thin fence and light should be able to pass behind it? We don't know. So in order to tell the shader how thick the object is, let's select the thickness mask and let's head over to the Raymarch settings. Here we can select a layer. In this case, I'm going to select the props layer. All you, you can already tell, the difference is quite profound between nothing and the props layer. And of course, I need to make sure that you know, these objects are in fact in the prop layer. And, uh, yeah, once that's set up correctly, the renderer is now able to tell how thick this object is and light uh, able to pass behind it as well. So that's how that's set up. There's one catch to it though. Um, these, the thickness mask, although rendered quite efficiently, still requires an additional draw call for each renderer. So you don't need to add everything to the props layer. For example, the building over here, well, it's just one giant big building and I don't really care if light passes behind it or not because it's it's quite huge and yeah, we don't need that, uh, that much information on it. Now let's head over to the shelf here. Um, this shelf looks quite nice, but I think we can tweak it to make it look even better. Um, so let's select the uh, shadow pass and we can see the shadow information here. And first let me explain uh, which type of shadows we support. There are two types of shadow, uh, cast shadows and contact shadows. Cast shadows, well, basically for each pixel in the scene that emit, emits light, um, light can either pass through or be blocked. And as soon as it's blocked, I consider that a casted shadow. Contact shadows are like much like ambient occlusion, but more realistic. And this is uh, in world units. So basically, you know, uh, how much distance do we want a, a very sharp uh, contact shadow to, uh, to appear? In this case, I think a, a small value is just fine. The cast shadows are the shadows that come from uh, other light sources and uh, travel a, a bit you know, further range, if you will. So if we increase that, you can see that it's, it's a very soft shadow and uh, more of your wide range occlusion. If that makes sense, you can also tell here with the uh, with the tree over here. You know the tree actually uh, casts shadows on the floor here. Right. If you like the shadows, but you just want to increase the overall intensity, of course, there's a slider for that as well. So maybe this is something that you uh, yeah, want to boost a bit more. Then uh, this is the place to do it. All right, one more feature I would like to, uh, to discuss is the reflection probe fallbacks. So in this case, when we look at this building over here, this is directly lit by uh, sunlight. So you would expect uh, light from this very bright area over here to bounce back and light building like this. How is this achieved? Well, by using the reflection probe fallback. So here we have a reflection probe can tell when you turn it on and off, it does a lot to the light uh, setting as well. To tweak the setting, you can go over to the post processing volume again. Here we have a slider, and you can really tell the difference, right? So this is just the same building with no uh, reflection probe fallback. But as soon as we increase this value, you can tell that light from the reflection probe is used as well. Uh, it supports multiple reflection probes per pixel. If you're interested to, to tweak that, this is part of the quality settings. So you can select one of the quality settings that you're currently using, and you can increase and decrease the amount of reflection probe fallbacks that you are using. You can also completely turn it off. And uh, yeah, so in this case, let's just put it to eight. So, we have so that wraps it up. Thank you for watching. I hope this video and the showcased feature set convinced you to give it a try. Please check out my other tutorial video as well, where I deep dive into more advanced features. In that video, I will be showcasing emissive light strips, baked GI mixed with real-time GI, for object overrides, and much more. Also, a big, big thanks to Sherman Waffle Studios for allowing me to use this asset. If you like this video and you like the Japanese scene, please head over to his S-Store page and check it out. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.